Hello everyone. Welcome once again to our video lectures on recruitment and selection. This is your professor, Danny Araneta Kabulay, and we shall start with important reminders. So just to, you know, make sure that everybody is on the same page, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you will be updated with the latest lectures. Okay, this is for free. For students enrolled in recruitment and selection, these lectures will be the basis for our lessons, for our examinations, and for our uh, outputs. So view all the lecture videos on YouTube before your scheduled online class. So these are usually uploaded between Monday and Wednesday. So the online class will only be brief if in case it pushes through. For easy access, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Danny Kabulay. So if you subscribe and press the notification button, then you will always be updated on the latest uploads. Okay? Now, watching the full video constitutes your attendance. There are five videos uploaded each week. These videos are short. They range from 5 minutes to a maximum of 16 minutes. So if you view each video, there is usually a question or a question or two questions at the end. You need to answer those questions. That will constitute your recitation. So you need to put your answers to those questions in the comments section at the bottom of each video. So that will be your, your recitation grade. So merit points are also awarded each week to students with outstanding or quality responses. So pagandahan ng sagot. Kung maganda yung sagot mo, bukod sa recitation grade at attendance grade, mayroon ka pang merit points. At ina-announce yung merit points within that week also. So, submit all your take-home essay quizzes to my email address, okay? Not on the chat group, not on the comment section of YouTube, but in my email address, okay? My email address is all small letters, Danny underscore Kabulay 2000 at yahoo.com, okay? You may want to download all these video lectures and PowerPoint lectures and save them in your electronic folder, your recruitment and selection electronic folder, which should contain all the lectures that I've given. So for today, what will be our lesson? This is video number one for week number six. We will be tackling the different recruitment techniques. This is part one, okay? Then we will look at how do you select the most appropriate recruitment technique. Kasi depende, no? Kung nagmamadali ka or marami kang nire-recruit or ang nire-recruit mo ba ay mga managerial positions or ang nire-recruit mo ay casual employees only. Okay? Or rank and file. Okay? How do you know if the recruitment technique you used was effective? Is it working? Okay? We will have a criteria for that. I will share that with you later. And finally, what are the do's and don'ts in recruiting employees? So let's move on to our next slide. There are many recruitment techniques available for recruiters and employers. So by employers, I mean the HR department of companies. So they could be recruiting in campuses. So this is called campus recruitment or in-school recruitment. Then there's what you call the job fair. Then online recruitment, newspaper advertisement, television advertisement, radio plugs or also called radio ads, email blast, word of mouth, or sometimes called referrals, then association announcements, bulletin board, posters, 
walk-ins or open house. And finally, placement bureaus. Let's look at each one of this. Campus recruitment is when you want to target specific schools where you want to recruit. This technique is characterized by employers or recruiters scouting for talents or applicants in various schools. Kung ang target nila ay senior high schools, so they will go to those schools offering senior high. And then maybe ang nire-recruit nila ay 18 years old. Or kung ang nire-recruit nila ay possible college graduates, they will most likely recruit in colleges and universities. They typically set up booths or exhibits which are visited by students for inquiries, filling out the application forms, and possibly getting an initial interview. So, para siyang one-stop shop. So, pag nag-inquire yung bata, pwedeng bigyan siya ng form. Tapos, uupo siya, bibigyan siya ng upuan at mesa, mag-fill out siya ng form within 15 minutes, then isasubmit niya. It is also possible that the employer or the recruiter can interview already the applicant right then and there. Maybe a five-minute interview and then tatawagan na lang siya kung ano ang decision, kung siya ay mahahire or will proceed to the next step. In some cases, representatives of the company or recruiters conduct room-to-room -room campaigns. So, pumapasok sila sa mga classroom para magkampanya, magbigay ng mga short speeches, to encourage the students to visit their booth and to apply. O kaya doon na mismo sa classroom nagdi-distribute ng application forms for those who are interested. So they deliver these pep talks and they answer the questions of the students because you know, gusto nilang nagtatanong ang mga bata and they distribute the application forms. Kasi kung minsan yung application form mahirap filapan, mahaba, maybe three pages, two to three pages. So Paring iuwi nila, ipapakita sa parents, sa mga kapatid, and then they will fill it out. Within two to three days, they bring it back, and then the representative of the company will come back to collect the filled out application forms. Okay? Of course, yung mga bata na gusto maging working student, yan, interesado silang mag-apply. Okay? They can work during the morning, and then they study afternoon and evening. Okay? Now, this technique is ideal for entry level. Kaya nga sa campus sila nagre-recruit kasi ito yung mga fresh na mga aplikante, mga bata pa, 18 years old and above. Okay? It can generate a large volume of applicants and the recruiters can identify the outstanding students. By talking to the teachers, the teachers can give the names. Sino ba yung mga magagaling na bata? Yan ang gusto nilang i-hire. Okay? Yung mga masisipag, mga honor graduates, mga scholars. This technique, however, will be subject to the bureaucracy of the school. Kasi kung minsan yung school, marami silang mga rikititos, marami silang mga requirements, no? mga permit para makapagtayo ng exhibit, ng booth, para payagan sila mag room to room campaign, para payagan sila mag-distribute ng mga forms, or payagan sila mag-hang ng mga posters sa kanilang bulletin boards. One must seek permit from school authorities. Kailangan yon, Okay and abide by campus rules in setting up the booths kasi bawal magkalat dun sa kanilang ingress at egress. Ingress, yung pagtatayo ng booth, pagpasok ng booth sa campus. Egress, yung paglabas ng booth sa campus. Huwag sila mag ng dumi o kalat. Okay? So, sa kanilang egress. This technique may yield a lot of job hoppers kasi alam mo, yung mga estudyante, fickle-minded yung iba. Hindi sila sigurado. So, ito yung mga tipong hindi seryoso sa pag apply that's a possibility, okay? Another technique in recruiting is job fair. Ang job fair, medyo mahal yan kasi meron silang tinatawag na mga fees na binabayaran. This technique allows the employer or recruiter to set up a booth or exhibit in a large commercial venue, event center, or public area, such as a shopping mall. Kung minsan, di ba, nakikita natin sa Mall of Asia, dyan may mga booth na mga nagre-recruit na mga ahente, for example, or mga promodizer. And possibly in a convention center like World Trade Center, okay? may malalaking job fair na ginagawa doon, o kaya sa isang government facility like, for example, the Malabon City Hall. So pwede magpa-job magpa fair si Mayor Oreta. 
possible yon. This may last one to three days, okay? So, you can visit on the first day, on the second day, or the third day. Usually, sa first day, dagsa ang tao. Kaya yung iba, they choose to come on the second or third day. Yung hindi masyado madami yung tao. Okay? Potential applicants may inquire, fill out application forms, and maybe potentially get an initial interview. Job fairs typically attracts a large crowd, especially when it is well advertised. Lalo na kung maraming nagkalat ng information, dumadagsa ang mga tao. Now, Itong technique na to, job fair, okay din siya sa mga entry level. Meaning in entry level, yung mga mabababang position. Rank and file positions. Casual employees, contractual, yeah. Some recruiters make it a one-stop shop where they process the applications rapidly on a daily basis. So pagpasok ng aplikante, inquiry, filling out a form, uh, submission of biodata, and interview, magaganap lahat yan within 20 to 30 minutes. So, mabilis yan. Okay? Kasi meron silang mga tauhan na ready to accept applications and interview the applicants. However, medyo mahal ang option na to, itong technique na to. Kasi may bayad yung tinatawag natin na participation fee. Tapos yung cost ng pagtatayo ng booth, magkano ba ang isang booth? Yung tent, yung mesa, yung mga gagamitin mong forms. Okay? So, mga posters. Of course, babayaran mo rin yung mga tauhan mo na mag interview Meron silang meal allowance, meron silang transportation allowance. Okay? And then promotional paraphernalia, namimigay kayo ng mga brochure, ng mga leaflets, all of that. So, yan ang cost ng isang job fair. Medyo mahal siya. Okay? This technique may attract a large number of job hoppers also. Okay? Yung mga nagbabakasakali lang. Baka makachamba, makatisod ng trabaho. Many of them are not so serious. Although I know, sa panahon ng pandemic, marami ang nawalan ng trabaho, mukhang marami ang desperate na magkatrabaho. Okay? Then we move on to the third recruitment technique. Yung tinatawag natin na online recruitment. Meaning, no physical contact. Everything is done online, through the internet. So kung meron kang data or meron kang internet connection, you may apply. This technique enables an employer or employee or a recruiter to recruit applicants through the internet or various online social media platforms like Facebook, so mag-FaceTime sila. Pwede rin uh, sila ay through Messenger, magi interview Ayan, okay? So pwede rin sa mga websites, magpapadala ng mga application through the websites. Okay? Or through email. So, alam natin yung LinkedIn, that's a social media application for those looking for a job and those who are looking for employees. Also, Job Street, a very popular website. Okay? Companies may post their job openings, accommodate inquiries, and receive applications and CVs. While applicants, on the other hand, may post their CVs. So, companies may notice them, okay? Many employers and recruiters tend to favor this technique because it is safe, it is technologically enhanced, very convenient, and easy to conduct. Ako mismo nagre-recruit ako through the internet. I do online recruitment. So, ako ay nag advertise okay? Pag ako ay nag advertise maraming nag apply pinapadala nila sa aking email address, kinokontak ko sila, nagpapasalamat ako na nagpadala sila ng application and then I will schedule them for an online interview. So the online interview is usually through video conferencing sa Messenger or Zoom or whatever platform. Okay? This technique, online recruitment, is most the, the most widely used medium now in recruiting, especially among millennial recruiters kasi napaka-convenient. Hindi na babiyahe sa opisina ng employer ang mga employees. Kahit nasa bahay lang sila, pwede silang ma-interview. Okay? It is one of the fastest ways to recruit employees and most efficient also. It targets desired applicants. So, ang tinatawagan lang talaga, in schedule for interview, those who are qualified. Yung hindi qualified, nagte-thank you lang sila. Nagpapadala, thank you for submitting your application. Unfortunately, we found out that you are not qualified for the position. We will keep your biodata, however, for future reference. 
Ganun ang usually sinasabi sa mga hindi qualified. Yung mga qualified, they are scheduled for an online interview. So, meron din tinatawag na crowdsourcing. Pag sinabing crowdsourcing, ito yung nagpo-post tayo sa ating wall, sa Facebook, sa Twitter, or kung ano pang social media platform na mga job openings. So, ibig sabihin ng crowdsourcing, tayo ay humihingi ng tulong sa ating mga social media friends, sa ating mga FB friends, baka meron silang kakilala na naghahanap ng trabaho o baka gusto nilang mag-apply. Okay? Yun ang ibig sabihin ng crowdsourcing. We are asking help. Okay? So, it may be relatively cheap in some instances, but in most sites, it is free. Libre po yan. Walang bayad. Okay? So, kaya pinapaburan siya ng mga employers at recruiters kasi most likely walang bayad ang online recruitment. One of the things we have to be cautious, yung mga tinatawag natin na mga fake ads. Kasi naglipa na yung mga fake ads. Kunwari, nagre-recruit, tapos mangihingi ng pera, o kaya kung saan pinapasa yung information natin sa mga unscrupulous organizations, gagamitin lang yung data natin, at na-violate na yung tinatawag natin na Data Privacy Act. Okay? So, ito ay pineperpetrate na mga scammers. Okay? <coughs> now, our next recruitment technique is newspaper advertisement. This technique allows the employer or recruiter to place an advertisement in the newspaper. So this could be a broadsheet, this could be a tabloid, magazine, or community newsletter. Now, large publications have a dedicated section solely for job openings. They call it classified ads. So, which may appear daily or during weekends. This used to be the most popular technique in the 1960s until early 2000. Pinakapopular ito sa mga nagre-recruit o yung mga naghahanap ng trabaho. Kasi lahat bumibili ng dyaryo nung araw. Pero ngayon, bihira na yung bumibili ng dyaryo. Hindi na yan ang mode of communication now or mode of getting the news. It's usually through television or through internet or radio. So, until the internet and social media have become the norm, dati popular ang newspaper ads. Ngayon, hindi na. Bihirang-bihira na to. And besides, medyo mahal din magpa-advertise sa dyaryo. Okay? This could be flexible. Pwede ka kasing mamili kung anong araw mo gustong ilabas yung ad. Pwede on a Wednesday, on a Friday. Pero karamihan ng employers gusto nila weekends. Kasi pag weekends, marami bumibili ng dyaryo. Tapos, pag nasa bahay lang ang mga tao, nagbabasa sila ng dyaryo. Okay? Kaya weekends, mas malawak ang readership. Okay? So, mas pinapabura na mag-advertise on a weekend. Kaya naman po, mas mahal ang advertising rates sa classified ads tuwing weekends. And weekends meaning Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, this could generate large volume of applicants, but this is expensive, I told you. No? Kung minsan yung maliit lang na advertisement, 14,000. Pag medyo malaking advertisement, like half page ng isang dyaryo, nasa 200,000 yan. Okay? So, minsan lang siyang lalabas. Okay? So, medyo mahal. It does not really target the desired candidates. Ang usually, nagbabasa ng dyaryo yung mga may edad na. So, yan ang mga nakukuha mong aplikante, yung mga medyo mature. Yung mga bata-bata, hindi na sila bumibili ng dyaryo. So, hindi nila makikita yung ads mo. Therefore, hindi sila magre-respond. Okay? So, newspaper advertisement is gradually becoming obsolete already. Okay? Five to ten years from now, baka wala na yan. Hindi na talaga yan gagamitin ng mga recruiter. So, this appeals only to the older applicants, yung mga nasa X generation. Yung Y, saka Gen Z, hindi na. Hindi na yan ang ginagamit nila. Okay, we're on to our first case study. We're looking for cashiers. Jollibee is looking for 520 new cashiers for their restaurant operations in Metro Manila. Ideally, a cashier must be young, 18 years old to 27 years old, high aptitude in math, personable, good communication skills, and at least a high school graduate. Many of their previous cashiers got sick due to the pandemic. Some have gone back home to their provinces, and some have resigned for unknown reasons. You, if you were the HR manager of the company, what recruitment technique would you recommend? Why are you choosing this technique? Paki-explain mo. Okay? Yan ang unang tanong na sasagutin ninyo sa comments section 
sa ibaba ng video na ito. Okay? So remember, place your answers to those two questions in the comment section of video lecture number one for week six in the YouTube channel of your professor. That's me. Okay? This will be part of your attendance and recitation grade for week six. Okay, stay tuned for video number two.